Welcome to Crossroads. The United States just launched a new military command in Japan with the intent of countering threats from the Chinese Communist Party. And this happens alongside similar actions, such as the United States upgrading military bases in Australia, deploying new missile systems to the Philippines, also making a new defense agreement with the Philippines, and actually a lot of other things like this. Now, among Asian partners and with NATO partners in Europe, it appears that many countries right now are shifting their focus to focus on threats from the Chinese Communist Party. And this looks like a new Asia pivot. Now, what's now unfolding looks like a reverse going back to the older defense policy that had been derailed by other conflicts, and then, you know, by the COVID outbreak, and then by the Russian war in Ukraine. Go back in time, 2011. The United States launched the pivot to Asia. And what that did was refocused the military on the Asia Pacific region, responding to the CCP's you know, launch at the time of aggressions into the South China Sea and the East China Sea. Now, given that, at the time, the pivot was more about freedom of navigation operations to ensure that the Chinese Communist Party couldn't take over the region, which they're still trying to do, and then you know, deny America access and its allies' access to shipping channels. But as the situation grew, other regional powers also came to recognize the CCP's threats. Japan notably began growing its military again. They changed some of their own defense policies because of the incursions into their waters by the CCP. Australia joined this alliance as well. India joined it. The U.S. focus in the region largely remained, but other conflicts then started overshadowing the threats of the CCP. Russia, COVID, so on, until now. With Russia, NATO has now declared that the Chinese Communist Party is the key enabler of its war in Ukraine. You know, stopping the war, in other words, and preventing it from being resolved on Russia's terms. And that means that the United States and its allies need to focus on the CCP in regards to that war. Because again, the CCP is the enabler. And as Russia and the CCP sent bombers into the air defense zone of Alaska, the United States and its allies, including Canada, Finland, and others, NATO countries as well, they're also now focusing on the Arctic. And there's even more examples like this. In fact, across the board, the situation is now shifting. And the Chinese Communist Party is becoming the new focus of militaries looking to defend against these growing threats. Now, a few shifts have been taking place recently. The CCP made some gestures to other nations to either act as a peace broker or to try to cool some of its existing tensions. Behind this, though, the Chinese Communist Party hasn't changed. The acts of, you know, to call for peace, they include the CCP blocking peace and then demanding deals on its terms, its mafia tactics. And its calls into gestures to, you know, cool tensions and so on, particularly in the South China Sea, they're already running into problems because as they talk about, hey, let's uh, cool tensions, they're still threatening these countries, sometimes in the same breath. Take, for instance, the Philippines. They found an agreement with the CCP to cool their tensions over their disputes in the South China Sea. Now they're saying the CCP misled them on what the deal actually entailed. Reuters said this. They said the Philippines foreign ministry accused China on Sunday, just recently, of mischaracterizing an arrangement between them that allowed the unimpeded re resupply of Filipino troops stationed on a beached naval vessel in the South China Sea. They say the Philippine Foreign Ministry spokesperson, Teresita Daza, said on Saturday the resupply mission that day was completed without incident, while Chinese Coast Guard vessels were at a reasonable distance. However, her Chinese counterpart said that China's Coast Guard was notified ahead of the mission and had, quote, let the vessel through after an on-the-scene confirmation. Now, here's the direct quote from the Philippines foreign ministry. It said, quote, It is unfortunate that the MFA spokesperson has mischaracterized the Philippines' ROE mission yesterday morning, instead of acknowledging how the two countries were able to manage differences in order to avoid miscalculation and misunderstanding. The spokesperson chose to misrepresent what has been agreed between the Philippines and China. Now, here's why that matters. The Chinese Communist Party's demands from the beginning, with its claims to the South China Sea and the East China Sea and so on, even going back to their claimed ownership over airspace with its Air Defense Authorization Zone, or ADIZ, declared in the region, 
Now here's why that matters. The Chinese Communist Party's demands from the very beginning, when it started claiming ownership of the entire South China Sea, the East China Sea, even going back to when it, you know, created this ADIZ, an air defense identification zone, over pretty much the whole region as well, was that the CCP was demanding that other countries ask permission to China if they want to travel through the region. So if countries start asking permission to the CCP, if they want to go to, you know, through the South China Sea, that represents a step towards affirming the CCP's claims. And so when the CCP says, yeah, the Philippines communicated with us and we let them through, that is on that same note. And interestingly, you know, the Philippines are not changing their stance on their disputed region either. They claim they own certain parts of that as well. And so the CCP, you know, mischaracterizing this becomes a real problem for this deal. Because on the CCP side, they're basically saying, hey, we won, we let you through. And the Philippines is saying, no, we came to a mutual agreement, not one side over the other. But even more important, the Philippines made another deal. They signed a defense pact with Japan. And the nature of that pact was a focus on challenging the Chinese Communist Party. And in addition to this, the CCP is also threatening the Philippines now. You know, despite that surface gesture to cool tensions because the Philippines is still moving forward with other defensive agreements, including notably with the United States. Earlier this year, during joint military drills, the United States deployed a Typhon missile system in the Philippines. Now, those are intermediate range missiles, and the CCP now appears to be threatening the Philippines over that to try to make them push out the United States. Reuters said the Chinese Foreign Minister, Wang Yi, has warned the Philippines over the U.S. intermediate range missile deployment, saying such a move could fuel regional tensions and spark an arms race. It says Wong said relations between the countries are facing challenges because the Philippines has repeatedly violated the consensus of both sides and its own commitments. Blaming the Philippines and saying it's the Philippines' fault, right? And he said, quote, if the Philippines introduces the U.S. intermediate range missile system, it will create tension and confrontation in the region and trigger an arms race, which is, which is completely not in line with the interests and wishes of the Filipino people, Wong said, seemingly, even though he's from China, claiming to represent the Filipino people. Now, on that, what is the Philippines doing? Well, they don't seem interested in backing down. In fact, its officials are now saying they will hold their ground against the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, the CCP's threats, in other words, are not working. They're actually having an opposite effect. And not only that, but after the CCP made these threats, the Philippines just expanded their defense agreement with the United States. I'll be talking more about this after a quick break. Experts agree, one of the best ways to protect against financial uncertainty is to diversify your portfolio. Learn how physical gold and silver can secure your retirement funds from today's economic challenges with a gold IRA from American Hartford Gold. You can safeguard your wealth with no penalties or taxes when you transfer your current qualifying retirement accounts. Call now and our precious metal specialists will send you a free information kit, no cost or obligation. American Hartford Gold, a trusted industry leader with an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau, has a five-star rating from thousands of happy clients. Whether you are getting physical precious metals in a gold IRA or delivered to your doorstep, we offer only the highest quality gold and silver. For your peace of mind, we also offer a no-fee buyback commitment, a low-price guarantee, along with free shipping and free insurance. So don't wait. Call the number on your screen today and secure your financial future. Welcome back. The United States is now launching what looks like a new Asia pivot, responding to threats from the Chinese Communist Party. Now, the U.S. has been upgrading military bases in Australia, deploying new missile systems to the Philippines, and on Tuesday, reaffirmed the U.S. unwavering commitment to the Philippines. Here's the official announcement from the Pentagon. U.S. Department of Defense, right here. It says both sides celebrated the unprecedented progress in the Philippines-United States alliance over the past two years. The secretaries reiterated the importance of the security alliance and shared commitments of the 1951 United States-Philippines Mutual Defense Treaty in an increasingly complex environment. And this is important, let me explain. 
But briefly, they say the secretaries reaffirmed that the Mutual Defense Treaty extends to armed attacks against either country's armed forces, aircraft, and public vessels, including those of their coast guards anywhere in the South China Sea. The significance of that cannot be understated. Now, under that agreement between the United States and the Philippines, it basically says if another country attacks the Philippine military or Philippine forces, that the United States can move to secure the region. Now, the problem they had until now was that the CCP is mostly using its Coast Guard. And these are regarded as not quite military ships. And now they've affirmed that the Coast Guard actually falls under that designation. So if the Chinese Communist Party tries again to block Philippine ships, rams them, attacks people with knives and you know, axes like they have been doing, by the way, then that will trigger this, again, act, this agreement, meaning the United States then has the mission to go and secure the region, meaning the South China Sea. This means, of course, that the CCP now has a red line. Its acts using its Coast Guard for these types of operations, these could really be almost an act of war, or at least something that would trigger, again, the U.S. having the ability now to back up the Philippines and help defend against the CCP. And notes as well, the secretaries also reaffirmed the critical importance of the 1998 Visiting Forces Agreement and the 2014 Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement as the foundation for building enhanced alliance coordination and interoperability, meaning the U.S. is going to be basically continuing its operations to cooperate with the Philippines on military defense. Uh, really shooting back notably on the CCP trying to threaten the Philippines over the deployment of the Typhoon missile system, but also probably expanding uh, cooperation on both sides, which they're also talking about. They say both sides recognize that modernizing the Philippines' defense and civil law enforcement capabilities is crucial to ensuring individual and collective security. Now look, this alone is pretty big. It will also seriously expand defense financing and cooperation between the United States and the Philippines. In fact, the U.S. pledged funding of $500 million for the Philippine military and Coast Guard, and it actually doesn't end there, you know, far from it. The Quad Alliance is also doing a lot more. Now look, one of the main reasons that a defense agreement between the Philippines and Japan and that missile system from the U.S. and the new, again, defense agreement between the U.S. and the Philippines, why is that so big? It's also because, to an extent, because that loops in the Philippines with countries in the Quad Alliance. That's the defense agreement between the United States, Japan, Australia, and India. And that has a heavy focus on the Chinese Communist Party. And notably, you know, the Quad Alliance, they just announced that they will be expanding their operations for maritime security in that region. Reuters said that foreign ministers from Australia, India, Japan, and the United States said Monday that they were seriously concerned about intimidating and dangerous maneuvers in the South China Sea and pledged to bolster maritime security in the region. Further, when they state, in security talks between the U.S. and Japan on Sunday, the two allies labeled China the, quote, greatest strategic challenge facing the region. Now, not only that, but the Pentagon also just announced new programs around the Asian region meant to deter any possible threat from the Chinese Communist Party. CBS News said the Pentagon is expected to announce investments in Asia this week that play into the long game positioning to deter China, just days after Chinese bombers for the first time ever encroached in the international airspace off Alaska. Despite ongoing wars in Ukraine and Gaza that still threaten to expand, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is making his 11th trip to the Indo-Pacific as secretary as part of the Pentagon's focus on China as what it calls the pacing challenge. It says Austin is visiting Japan and the Philippines on this trip, as we just mentioned. In Japan, Austin is expected, it said, to preview a major upgrade of command and control between the two countries, which he did, by the way. They expanded that. And notes in the Philippines, he expected to announce $500 million in foreign military financing that, according to a defense official, would go in part towards cybersecurity and maritime self-defense that could help defend against an aggressive China, which he now did. Now, there's also the nuclear threats from the CCP. Remember, the Chinese regime has been blocking talks on nuclear disarmament. And its news outlets have oddly been suggesting that countries, even supporting Ukraine, 
could result in nuclear threats. The CCP is indirectly threatening nuclear war. The United States and Japan, notably, they're now reaffirming their commitment to deter those threats. In particular, this includes a nuclear umbrella. Newsweek said, the United States reaffirmed its nuclear commitment to defend its security ally Japan on Sunday by reinforcing extended turns which defied China's demands on nukes. Now it says, extended deterrence is a commitment to deter and respond to potential nuclear and non-nuclear scenarios in defense of allies and partners, also known as providing a nuclear umbrella, according to the U.S. Air Force Doctrine publication on nuclear operations. In other words, missile defense systems. Now keep in mind, the U.S. has been putting up missile defense systems in parts of Asia, in parts of Europe. They're even talking right now with Germany about doing this. This is triggering nuclear threats from Russia and the CCP, which are, oddly enough, are triggering more nuclear deterrence to go into place, not less. And remember, too, one of the CCP's biggest disputes with South Korea was around it, uh, deploying, allowing the U.S. to deploy nuclear defense systems there. Now, look, in addition to this, the United States just launched a military command in Tokyo focused on countering threats from the Chinese Communist Party. And alongside this, the United States also just upgraded its military bases in the northern parts of Australia. So again, that's new bases, new defense agreements, Australia, Japan, Philippines, and maybe others in the way as well. Now remember, both Japan and Australia are members of the Quad Alliance, and these actions are taking place in the broader context of them condemning the CCP and its growing threats. And this suggests a couple things. Remember, the CCP is paying lip service to peace, right? They're the peace broker. But in every dispute, the CCP is making aggressive threats all through the region. And of course, the CCP also just held military drills in Belarus, right as NATO was meeting to end the Ukraine war and determine the Chinese Communist Party is the effective enabler of that war in Europe. Then the CCP, what did they do? They held joint naval exercises around the South China Sea alongside Russia. And then the CCP sent warships off the coast of Alaska. Then they sent bombers and jets into the air defense identification zone of Alaska, violating again, you know, some U.S. international airspace. And remember, the CCP is doing this while at the same time making surface gestures at cooling tensions. The words do not align with the actions. There's a contradiction. It's hypocrisy. And countries are not buying it. They're seeing through it. In fact, the concern right now aligns with what the CCP appears to be threatening. You know, in Japan, for example, there's concerns that a war similar to the one between Russia and Ukraine could soon take place in the Asian region. I'll be talking more about this only on EpicTV.com, the uncensored streaming platform of the Epic Times. So if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, X, Rumble, there's a link in the description below. You can click on that, get access to the rest of the episode. Not only will you get access to my whole library of shows, but also family-friendly movies, premium investigative reports, and hard-hitting documentaries on the issues that matter, like the Chinese Communist Party's 100-year plan to defeat the United States, which I expose in my documentary, The Final War. The CCP is one of the biggest threats to America. They're using things like video games, entertainment, movies, culture, to subvert and influence the next generation. The unrestricted war against their country is one of the scariest but least understood issues of our time because it's not tangible. You know, there's no tanks or bombs. It's all being done through soft power means and ideological subversion. I spent over a decade investigating the CCP's subversion, and frankly, it's such an important issue that I've dedicated my career to warning people about the threats of the CCP. If you'd like to find out more about what exactly the CCP is plotting against America, then watch The Final War. You can find the link in the description below, and I'll show you all the trailer before we go exclusively to EpicTV.com for the rest of the episode. I'll see you there. The greatest threat facing the United States is the CCP. The Epic Times investigation team had studied the CCP for years, but what we uncovered was yielding evidence beyond our imagination. With Chairman Mao, with the Prime Minister, our talks have been characterized by frankness. The Clinton administration said, oh, don't worry about it. This will be a poison pill for China. 
China's strategic goal is to make sure that the U.S. has four enemies, and one of them must be a terrorist group. We are giving of our life's blood so that the Chinese Communist Party can survive and thrive.